I think human consciousness was a tragic misstep in evolution. We became too self-aware. Nature created an aspect of nature separate from itself. We are creatures that should not exist by natural law. Well, that sounds god fucking awful, Rush. We are things that labor under the illusion of having a self. This accretion of sensory experience and feeling. Programmed with total assurance that we are each somebody. When in fact, everybody's nobody. I wouldn't go around spouting that shit I was you. People around here don't think that way. I don't think that way. I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. You think I've committed a crime? You're killing the planet. And I suppose that you're trying to solve it by uh, experimenting on children. 50,000 years ago, a relative of the modern day human lived on the Indonesian island of Flores. Because resources were scarce, people adapted by becoming smaller. Adults were only three feet tall. As a result, they consumed less, had a smaller carbon footprint. If we're going to survive climate change, we have to adapt to our environment the same way Homo floresiensis adapted to theirs. I want us to survive. To do that, we have to evolve. And since we don't have time to wait on natural selection, I figured out a way to speed up the process. Oh, by changing their DNA. Your headmaster was kind enough to seat me the mic for this morning's lesson. And I'm here to give you a little bit about what the school has been holding back from you. The goddamn truth about Darwin, scarcity, and the world you actually live in. It's not the warm, swaddled place your headmaster and your parents have told you about. It's populated by people like me who will tear you apart. Nature didn't select me. I selected myself. Darwin himself would be proud. Darwin. I missed his treatise on genocide. Evolution, Mr. Marker, takes many forms. Oh, we gotta get to the car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't go outside. And he's, he's, gonna, he's coming in here. He's gonna kill us. There are four of us and one of him. We can protect each other. That's right. There are four of us. And if we split up and make a run for it, the best he can do is just get one. Wow. It's Darwin, man. Survival of the fittest. It's our only chance. Me now? What are you doing? This is what I gotta do. I got people dying. Man, I didn't do anything. You think I can? Survival of the fittest, bro. And right now, you're not looking too fit. We're gonna fight over, Missy. Let's do it the right way, the honorable way. Out! 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 Take that! Oh, oh, oh. You want some more? Oh. <laughs> Ease yeah. down. Come on, get up! Stay down, bitch. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Natural selection at work. I weep for humanity. Excuse me while I go tell Missy the good news. Oh, my God. Mm. This is insane. Dre, why aren't you putting this stuff in the kitchen? No room. Oh, my... You know, I got us supplies to last us five days. You're welcome. You got steaks? I'm not gonna let a blackout rob me of my lifestyle. Dre, do you know the story of the farmer in the river? You know I don't, but... Okay, well, there was a drought, Dre, but the farmer lived by a river, so he was fine with his crops, and he was safe, and he could eat. But when the drought ended, he walked down into the town, and he discovered that everyone else had died of hunger. So the river man became the mayor of his own town, and the idiots died. Natural selection, Bo. So you're telling me that you would prefer to live in a society that has no community so you can get yours? Hey, uh, when I was in grade school, PE was about being picked on and picked last, but you put me on your team, right? Right, oh. but also wrong. PE's about survival of the fittest. 
You're willing to wipe out every human in this town? I believe it was a human who coined the phrase... Survival of the fittest. Over there's ideas, what you're doing. It's not really making a difference. It's just prolonging the inevitable. Survival of the fittest. Adaption, evolution. Anything you do other than eat, sleep, shit, fucking kill is a symptom of insanity. You see, there was a point during human evolution where something, some neuron pathway misfired, and we all became self-aware. That is to say, we became insane. We are balls of flesh and bone on a rock of ice spinning through a dark, random universe designed only to survive. But then something happened in our DNA where we went, hey, wait, wait, wait. What if I matter? What if it's all about me? Did you ever watch those, um, the David Attenborough shows? Mm. They're magnificent, right? Full of death. And yet, in a way, it makes sense. And then you try and watch the news, and it's crazy. There's no sense at all. And I will answer that other question for you. Does a crazy person know they're crazy? Yes. It's called a conscience. Jiminy Cricket, that's just the part of our brain screaming at the psychic tear caused by the gulf between what we are and what we pretend to be. You think the world needs your doodles, artist? There's no art in the natural world. There is murder. This is model after one the Navy SEALs use. Those are tough SOBs, aren't they, the Navy SEALs? You know why? Because when they fall down, their parents probably said, get up. <laughs> Not the rest of us. We baby-proof our lives now. That eliminates the chance of surviving and adapting to things. Old Chuck Darwin would be rolling over in that wooden casket they put him in the ground in. Son stabbing his father in the back. Not a good way to uphold the family name. You're wrong. Precisely the way to do it. Lock up the lunatics, keep the incompetence away from the finances, and leave the running of things to those that know what they're doing. Oh, survival of the fittest. What a wonderful philosophy to pass on to your child. Ray's not really cut out for business. And Heather is? She understands. Survival of the, um... Darwin's natural what's it, um, fittest. Yeah. We might have the, uh, the cars, the helicopters, the yachts, but it's still a street fight, Inspector. Always will be. Is your dad tough on you? Not according to him, he's not. He says I'm gonna get eaten alive if I don't start trying harder. Like that theory we just learned about. Survival of the fittest? He says I'm headed for extinction. I've learned my lesson. At first, I was against your plan. I thought that we should just live with Elijah's treaty, but after that party, those innocent people, there will never be a peace. The weak will always be at the mercy of whoever is calling the shots. It's survival of the fittest. We need to protect ourselves. Who are we gonna make fun of now? No need to worry. Every place I've ever worked in has had a jury. When one jury leaves, the office naturally selects a new jury to fill that role. It's social Darwinism, the strong prey on the weak. I'm not leaving you. If you have a choice between life or death, you will leave me. It is what you call survival of the fittest. You don't have much faith in people. So how do you like military school? 200 girls, 10 bathrooms, it's survival of the fittest. Beauty that belies a dark nature. So even your plants have hidden agendas. Well, I guess it all comes down to survival of the fittest. Doesn't it? Why are you doing this? You're hurting me. Well, if I wasn't hurting you, you'd be hurting me. We humans, we call it survival of the fittest. I failed you, Clark. Because no true son of mine, no true Luther, would have let me live this long. Not my choice. You're right. 
I made you this way, and because I have faith, Clark, it's got to be survival of the fittest. Whether you're on this earth or any other, I am the most fit. I will be the survivor. I never should have led you to their gun warehouse. I knew this gentleman, those M4s, was a bad move. None of my moves are bad. I was my best guy. Insurance covers a warehouse. And I've always been about survival of the fittest. Your family will be absorbed into the others. Your assets will be divided equally amongst the uncles and their kin. Of course, you will be financially compensated. You're ending my family. Think of it as evolution. Survival of the fittest. The elders of the pack eaten by the young. You seem awfully upset that an extraterrestrial's DNA was stolen. Makes me wonder if you and Super Girl are more than just work buddies. Don't play games. Never. It's a simple evolutionary equation. Survival of the fittest. For humanity to survive, we need to be fitter than them. It's spreading. You know, I created a safe environment, free from outside predators, so that the prisoners would be safe. But when Klaus turned, he became the predator, triggering the survival instincts in the other inmates. So when he attacked the inmate in the elevator... A domino effect was born. Evolution is a bitch. It's long enough time for you to have outgrown your blind allegiance to the authority and their rule of law. There is only one law, the law of nature the survival of the fittest. And we need to take this world back from humans, not placate them with billboards and PR campaigns. In a few hours, the recombinant virus inside those eggs will be strong enough to infect one quarter of this town. You want to release it? No. I want you to. You want me to play God? You said you wanted to see who could carry their own weight. This is how. It's not God, it's, it's Darwin. It's survival of the fittest. It's getting cut through out there, detective. Blame Brussels or the ozone layer, what have you. Survival of the fittest day, eh? is that the feeling? Afraid so. Looks like you may be wanting an explanation. See, Going it alone, that ain't an option nowadays. Still, it is survival of the fittest. That's a paradox right there. So I laid out some rules of the road to keep things from going Darwin every couple hours. Keep our merry band together and stress-free. This isn't about us. This is about us beating everyone else, OK? Oh. It's survival of the fittest. There's the right. strong, <laughs> and there's the weak. <laughs> what did you do? You killed them? We left them for the Z's. Darwin will take care of the rest. These are desperate times. Choices have to be made, hard choices. The kind of decisions you can't just leave up to a traumatized mom. Radical change always involves collateral damage. Darwin doesn't have a heart. Neither do you. For a very long time, historians and archaeologists have wondered how did ancient humans survive the Neanderthals, okay? How did we defeat them when they were bigger and they were smarter and they were stronger, faster, they had better tools than us? So why are we still here and they're not? And then they found a cave, okay? And in that cave, they found a 40,000-year-old flute. A flute? Yes. Yeah, a flute. Yeah. yeah. And then they realized that maybe ancient humans didn't defeat Neanderthal. Not in the way that, that we think of the word defeat, OK? They came together as an answer to defeat. They sat around a campfire. They shared their stories with each other in the form of music and paintings, and, and, and they created a, a common identity. And then they, you know, they, they built communities, and they grew. And, and then as they grew, 
Neanderthal retreated, and then after a while, he just died out. So this, yeah, this, this, this is the one thing that separates us from the animals. For better or for worse, it brings us together. And if we're trying to rebuild something, you can't ignore that. After everything you've seen and done, you still believe that's all it will take? Yeah. The survival of the fittest. Sharing with each other. I mean, that's part of what makes us stronger.